So December 2021, and and I I I hopped on a call um, that changed my life. Oh man, it was, and it was with you know a member of your guys' team. I was like, wow, there's so much more out there. I'm just scraping the surface, and I know what I'm doing is not long term. I have some serious pain, which the the person was nice enough to point out for me. And I'm like, I, I want more than this. There's there's so much more out there. I can do this. And uh, and it was that phone conversation when I was sitting in my car in the cold December when the car was turned off. Um, trying to keep like a little bit of battery that I had on my phone, that changed it for me. I'm like, I'm like, it's it's over, it's it's done. I'm I'm taking this path no matter how long it takes me. All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. And this one, guys, we have a great podcast and overall great story from you guys, beginning to end. I think you guys are really really gonna enjoy this. So. We're going to be talking to our guest. He came out of college just like a lot of people. He was 23 years old and he jumped into the corporate world, right? Making 3000 bucks a month, which at the time he thought it was decent. But after meeting a couple mentors and seeing like, oh, you're making 3000 in a day or in a month, you could be making that literally every single day. So it opened up his mind and that's when he jumped more into the high ticket sales world where even in there, he wasn't making more than what he was as a corporate job because it was, you know, sales in, in the car industry and, you know, a lot of different things that we'll talk about in the episode. But from all of that, all the way into jumping in RC and his first month within his offer was able to do $18,000 in commissions like mind blown we're going over the entire process of how he got from there and some of the tips that he gave when he actually jumped into that offer so if you guys want to check out the episode obviously make sure to sit back relax and enjoy today's episode so before we jump too deep into everything uh first of all welcome to the podcast how's how's the week been thank you man it's it's been good um good last month got some momentum going into this month it's it's been it's been going well Amazing. We're going to talk a ton about that momentum because I think, um, again, in, in the amount of time we've been able to, to kind of ramp up in your current offer is really awesome. So uh, first things first, man, you know, I think you, you said you've listened to some of the, the episodes before. So, you know, know what we usually start with is, you know, let's take it back, you know, before even because I know you went to college and stuff like that. But, you know, what were you doing even before college? Like when you were in high school, like what was like the original goal for for your life? If you had like a little bit of stuff figured out? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I and you ask great questions on this podcast. I, I appreciate <laughs> that too, because um, I've seen more than a couple episodes, and I, I love it. So, um, taking it back, I I knew I, I grew up um, very well off, right? I never had to had to really struggle for all that much. I had you know college was just sort of in the cars. That was what was expected of me, and and I knew I wanted to make money. I just didn't know what that looked like for me. Um, valued the idea of entrepreneurship, working for myself. And, and I sort of naturally gravitated towards the world of sales for that reason. Um, didn't know that I was going to end up here, though, and, and really wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I went to college, um, kind of followed the cookie cutter path of get the corporate job, um, nice, stable job income in 30 years. You can retire with a nice, hefty pension. Um, didn't like it. <laughs> didn't like it at all. And, and I had no idea where I was going to end up. But I got to say, I'm grateful to be where I'm at right now, which is controlling my income, living the lifestyle that I want to live and continually kind of kind of working towards that. Cool. So I do want to just kind of talk a little bit more about just like the college experience and kind of what you so what did you like go to college for? Like what like did you enjoy college? Like did you kind of have like the college experience of like partying and stuff like that? Like just maybe a little bit more about about your experience there. Yeah, I I, um, I didn't think college was for me. You know, I, I got there as a, as a freshman. I was like, wow, I have all this freedom. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm not away from my, you know, I'm away from my parents. This feels great. Um, but I'm like, wow, is, is the price tag worth it on this? And, and I, I didn't really think so. Um, so when I went to school, I went to school for communications as a reference, which is, you know, who knows? Same. Yeah, just, well, for the, for the one, for the one year that I went, it was communications. But I feel like communications is like kind of the, the, the cop out of like, I don't really know what else I want to do. And communications is like kind of fits a lot of different things. So at least that exactly. was me. <laughs> exactly. And, and I got to, you know, I got to interact with a bunch of different people and, and freshman year, I, I really didn't have a great experience. I was like, Hey, I'm just, I'm just going to classes. I'm coming back. I just, I didn't really like it very much. And for that reason, I actually ended up dropping out of school. Um, and I had no intention of going back and I just, I didn't think it was for me. I was like, the price tag is not worth it. I can, I can, you know, work during this time when I'm spending all this money trying to figure out what I'm looking to do. Um, and it just, it seemed too rushed for me. And I think it does for a lot of people. So I, I took some time to reflect. I took about two semesters off. And, and I just, I thought to myself, like, I, you know, I don't really know what I want to do, but I know that sitting home in my parents' place is not, is not it either, right? I have all these friends that are off at school. Um, I, I need to be around, you know, more younger people. I need to have like the ideas flowing. Um, so for me at that point, college made sense. So I actually ended up going back to school. I did finish, 
I'm grateful that I did um, because it was it was not in the classroom that that you know the the important stuff happened. The the education piece was was not it. It was everything I did outside the classroom. So you know joining the clubs, the organizations, getting in some leadership roles, um, doing what I can to minimize the cost of college so I could help my parents pay for it, um, which which really ended up working out. And I'm grateful to say I finished. Um, <laughs> looking back, knowing what I know now, probably wouldn't have done probably wouldn't have done it. You know, and and I think a lot of people feel that way because the the price tag for college, the ROI is just not there anymore. Um, at least that's that's my belief. So um, grateful I finished. Grateful I finished, and I'm I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm happy to be where I'm at right now. I learned a, a bunch of lessons along the way, but that was that was my experience of it. Yeah, I was gonna say I think you know obviously everyone as cliche as it sounds like hindsight is twenty twenty of like you know would I go through it again maybe not but you also like you said you kind of have to remember all the different things that you learned in between there I think you know one thing that you said you know anyone that I've talked to that has had some sort of like leadership in like high school or college like though that's when you start to learn how to have the hard conversations when you start to like really it's kind of you're tested at that point right yeah. and a lot of those things you you do learn is then kind of brought into um you know into into your current role so w one one thing i'm curious about is because you know and to give you some context uh my dad uh was in the military for like 35 years so like it was just instilled in the back of my brain like college 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 and i went to college mostly because i wanted to appease him right and, and appease my parents of like okay i gave it a try so yeah. w was it kind of the same thing for you and if so what was like, you know, when you when you did take that semester off, I guess, how did that go? Like, was it was it something where you had to kind of talk them into like, here's my plan or like, what was how was that? It was it was tough. Um, it was one of the toughest points up until my life that far, because if you came home and you didn't stay in college in, in the town that I grew up in, it's like, oh, you were there's something wrong with you. you now, <laughs> there's something that's not working in your life. You're kind of the, the weird guy that. Um, takes time off from school. Like who does that? That's not the, that's not the path you're supposed to take. Um, so convincing my mom took a little bit more effort um, and she wasn't really on the same page with me and we still kind of bicker about that here and there. Um, my, my father, however, he he's always been self-employed. He's owned multiple businesses in his life. Real estate was very much a part of his life when he was growing up, um, you know, acquiring different rental properties, just being his own guy. And he's still in that space. He still owns his own business. Um, and he just, he instilled that in me. And I think I got that kind of fever of like, hey, I can, I can do this on my own. Um, I don't need, you know, the schooling or I don't need another boss to be able to do this. And, and that, I kind of got that fever. So when I came home from school, he's like, hey, I, I wish I could tell you, you should go back, but I, I, I really can't. So, so that was, so I had to come to that decision on my own, which I did. I'm grateful I did. Um, but that was tough, tough transition period for sure. Yeah. I think when you, when you, cause that's a great point. And, and, uh, you know, my dad, like I know he was in, in the military and, and my, my mom was like a stay at home mom. So it's like, I didn't, it was hard to, to, to kind of convince them. Like there's, there's more than just this right for you. It was, I mean, not saying it was easy, but it was easier because like you said, your dad couldn't be like, oh, well, there isn't anything else there because he'd be a hypocrite, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's yeah. like he, he could probably like, you know, I have, I have kids now, too. And, you know, I've, I've talked to my wife about it a lot. Like, you know, when they get to that point, it's like I'm not going to push them into anything like I know what is possible and like we're going to support them in whatever we can do and like instill the same mindset. So I, I definitely get that how it's but you've already had that bug. So, you know, that something else is possible to, to kind of hit right. that next step. So, OK, so if we, we fast forward a little bit. So you, you go back to college, you graduate what happens after that so you get your you know your diploma or you, know, you graduate college what's what's the next steps after that yeah so i i did exactly what i was supposed to do which is uh i started working immediately after college i worked all through college too i always enjoyed working and having money in my pocket and and helping my parents pay for college and all that um but i started working right out of school and i, I got a job working in the rental car business um, for a company called Enterprise Rent a Car. Not sure if I should throw company names in here. <laughs> well, Enterprise is big enough to where it's like. Big enough, it's, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I, uh, so I, I was doing really well in that position. It was like it was there was sort of some sales involved in that in terms of like selling some protection products on the vehicles, um, you know, bumping the the rates of the cars that we put out for. And I was really damn good at that. Like I was, I came in first month, I just crushed my sales numbers. And to keep in mind, I wasn't making commission on this. This was strictly, hey, this is the leaderboard. This makes you look good for upper management. Um, maybe better chance of getting promoted later on. Um, but I was just crushing my numbers and I liked it. I was like, that was my most favorite part of the day was selling these protection products. Is I was like, hey. 
I'd walk away selling 50% when my team members were selling 20% of the cars that they would. So I was like, wow, I, I, this, this feels good. I feel like I can do this. Um, and I got some great experience and I built a lot of relationships. And in the corporate world, you might know this or you might have heard this before from other people. You build such a, like a network of people that it's really tough to leave. Um, cause there's so many people that you need to like shake hands with, say, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to be able to stay. Um, and people, they were like, Oh my God, you're going to go so far with this. You're doing so well. And I was like, ah, guys, this is, this is not me. Um, yeah. Do you feel like, do you feel like that was almost your, uh, you know, as you were like making that transition out, do you feel like that was almost like the second conversation like you had with your mom of like, you know, the, the first route, like you had to kind of convince her and now you have to go to this next level of convince all these other people of like, okay, I'm leaving. And they're like, well, you have so much potential. <laughs> yeah. That, that's such a great parallel. Um, cause it hundred percent is, I mean, a hundred percent was, you know, when we're faced with those decisions, like we say in the sales space, like you fight like hell to stay within your comfort zone, right? It took me, you know, day after day of saying like, Hey, I, I know I got to have this conversation. I know I got to have this conversation with my boss. Um, I got, I just got to set a date. I got to do it. Um, and, oh man, um, tough, tough transition period because these, these people, they cared about me. They, they, you know, paid me to learn. Um, I learned so much from them about building relationships and being with people. Um, I just knew that the life that they had and that the life that I could see fast forwarding was, was not for me. And that's, that's why I needed to say, Hey, um, I care about my long-term future more than I do, you know, these relationships. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure anyone that's listening has probably been in that situa situation before of like having those hard conversations. But, you know, whether it's with, you know, a loved one or breaking up with somebody or, you know, whatever, whatever the relationship is. But it's like if you know you have to have that conversation, you know, it's probably the right decision for you anyway. You know, and it's like it's it's the the discomfort with that and, and knowing that you should have that conversation like, you know, at the other the other side of it, there's something greater. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm I'm actually curious like for for you because even in in like the way that you speak and like you know you going into one of your first sales jobs and and seeing you know a good amount of success and closing 50 percent and high uh, on top of the leaderboards what do you think in like your childhood or like in your past has allowed you to have this like conviction and confidence it's like okay like i'm the best i'm gonna make it done like i'm gonna make it like do you can you pinpoint that to anything or is it like a lot of things yeah that's that's the <laughs> damn good questions aaron so i uh <laughs> I, I I was really competitive growing up. I always played sports um, and I, I was always very good at the sports. And, and I, I just, you know, I, I wanted to, I wouldn't settle. Maybe this was, I hate to say it. And I don't hate to say it. I love to say it. Uh, my mom, <laughs> my, my mom instilled this in me, which is like, it, it's a double-edged sword, right? Cause there's a, there's a, there's an insecurity that comes from not being the best when you've always kind of been on top. And this, this belief that my mom instilled on me, which double-edged sword, I had to kind of take this as I, as I grew up, but it's like, Hey, um, you know, you can always do better. Right. And, and sometimes you got to take your wins as they come. Sometimes you got to say like, Hey, I'm doing a damn good job. Like, let me be proud of myself. Um, but that constant urge to want to be better and just continually improve that's been there since it was young. Um, and then when I, when I, you know, injured my knee and I got taken out of commission with soccer was my sport early on. Um, I'm like, Hey, where can I translate this into another area of my life? Cause I got to channel this energy somehow. Um, let me, let me do it in the business world. And, and that's, that's, that's where it came from. Love it. Yeah, I always see like because I've noticed that in, in multiple people that have been on the podcast because, you know, some people just ha like naturally have like that gift of of just th the presence. Like I can't really explain it. Like, you know, when you talk to someone that's been through through different things and, you know, figuring out like where that like how they were able to, to channel that energy. Um, OK, cool. So you go through the you're, you're at the, the company, you're working there. What, where, when did you find like the concept of being able to do this stuff online? Like what, what was like the time frame and how did you originally find it? Yeah. So I, I was one of those people who have, <laughs> has, has seen all the YouTube videos with like the Amazon FBA and the affiliate marketing and the drop shipping and, and, uh, you know, creative financing types of real estate, like every type of thing. Um, but when I saw the sales, I was like, you know, the high ticket closing, I was like, Hey, I, I could do that. You know, that's, that's something that I can acquire. I can do the skills. I don't need any capital up front. Um, this is something I can, I can do. And it sort of resonated with me, it clicked with me and, and the ads just started kind of popping up as they do, right? The algorithm started to, started to, to do their, do their work. And it would, it was in, it was in the winter time. I want to say it was December of, of 2021, 20, now 2022, it had to be, um, December of 2022, no, yeah, sorry, 2021. December of 2021, say, three months ago, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so December of 2021. And, and I, I, I hopped on a call um, that changed my life, and and I uh, 
Oh man, it was, and it was with, you know, a member of your guys' team who I'm not sure if is still with you guys or not, but, um, but I was like, wow, there's so much more out there. Um, I'm just scraping the surface and I know what I'm doing is not long-term. I have some serious pain, which the, the person was nice enough to point out for me, um, of where I'm currently at. And, and, and I'm like, I, I want more than this. There's, there's so much more out there. I can do this. And, uh, and it was that phone conversation when I was sitting in my car in the cold December, when the car was turned off, um, trying to keep like a little bit of battery that I had on my phone, um, that changed it for me. I'm like, I'm like, it's, it's over. It's, it's done. I'm, I'm taking this path no matter how long it takes me. Mm-hmm. So, so did you immediately like, so you had the conversation in December, did you immediately jump in? Cause I think in your post you said it wasn't until April or like, what's, what's the time frame? Yeah. So, so I immediately jumped into the program and I started learning as much as I could. Um, at the time with, with this corporate job, I was working 55, 60 hour work weeks. Um, and it was draining and I, I would, and I was driving about like 30, 40 minutes to work each day, each, you know, each, uh, each way. And, and I, <laughs> I was doing as much as I could. So I would hop on the calls, you know, the zoom calls, I would work through the content as much as I could, but it got to a point where in, in, I guess, April, early May, where, where I had to leave the company because I'm like, Hey, I, I can't, juggle these two. I'm not going to be able to take a part-time gig if I'm doing this full-time thing. I got to cut out the full-time. I got to cut out the corporate job. Um, just dive head first into this and just make it work. Um, and that was, and that was what I did. And just a, a, an aside to that, I, I signed a lease for an apartment um, that I, that I wasn't sure I was going to pay for because I didn't have a job because I knew I was leaving my current job. Um, uh, but that was my sort of burn the boats metaphor of like, Hey, I'm going to make this work or, or I'm going to die trying. Nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's so did you, so, so for you, it was more of just like a, a cut, like you, you cut the ties quickly. You were like, okay, so, oh, okay. So you, you would work to the job for like a couple of months. So up into April and then you're just like, okay, can't do this anymore. Like let's cut it. So was there ever like any, any fear behind that? Cause I, I think there's two people, right? There's uh, some people we've talked to where they, they have to kind of like build up a little bit of like a nest egg, if you will. And like, mm-hmm. that's where they feel a little more comfortable. And a lot of times like that comes with people have like families and kids and obligations and a mortgage and stuff like that. So for you, was it more of just like, I'm, I'm cutting this now and I, I need to make it happen type thing. Was is that, that's how it was for you? Yeah. I, I, so I had, I started the, the corporate job back in, um, I want to say it was September, maybe late August. So I had, I had a couple months built up. I was kind of, you know, I was, I was approaching sort of that year mark or at least three quarters of the way through my, through my year, which I was told I was like supposed to stay with. Um, and, and so I had built up a little bit because I still had bills to pay. I still paid for my own groceries. I, granted, I was still living under my parents' house, which is, um, was, was a real blessing for me. Um, but, but it, it was, it was like, Hey, I've saved up this amount of money. Um, this is how much money I can survive on for four months or, or whatever it is, you know, paying the rent and everything like that. And I was like, I got four months to figure this out. Um, and that was, that was what it was. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so you jump in April of 2022. So, so I mean, come, I guess 10 months ago, almost coming up on a year. We're in February. We're recording this. Uh, mm-hmm. So what was, what happened after that? You, you jumped in like, cause you had already gone through a good portion of the training for, you know, those first four or five months. So what, yeah. what was like the next, next steps for you? Yeah. Next steps was, was self-sourcing like crazy. Um, for some reason I was putting this off. I don't know why, but someone had made a post in the Facebook group where it's like, Hey, um, I just landed a gig in 30 days. This is what I did. This is what I did. I was like, it's that easy. <laughs> let me just, let me just go do that. Let me just take massive action. So I started sending out, you know, 20, 30, I want to say I even sent out like 50 messages in one day. Um, you know, out of those 50 messages that I sent, I, I got, you know, uh, 20 responses back out of those 20 responses turned into five conversations, five conversations, three interviews. And then I sort of just kind of ran with that. Um, and, and then I, I dove head first and I want to say I started my first gig in, um, after working through another month of the training, cause I felt like I, I was working through it in my corporate job, but I didn't, I didn't cement it. Like I didn't really absorb it. Cause I was just working like, just like crazy. So I, I spent another month really diving into the training, self-sourcing like crazy. And I, I started my first real gig in, okay, I'll say this an illegitimate, a, a very tiny company, very tiny company that just had me cold calling for like a month. And I was like, I was like, is this, is this high ticket closing? Like it doesn't feel like it. And, and so I try not to include that as part of my story, but it's very much a part of my story. I had to go through that, that kind of not real legitimate offer, kind of this, you know, the person who was just trying to get their business off the ground. I was banging phones and I was like, this doesn't feel right. So I found my, found my way after a month of doing that into a new gig, which is also, it was also a startup, you know, relatively smaller company, about three to five closers on the team. And, and I worked that from, um, late August until about December, um, was making some money, was doing well with it. Um, 
but it wasn't the kind of money that I was looking to make. You know, I was, I was making the most that I had made in the high ticket closing space. I was closing deals. I had people booking on my calendar. It was a high ticket closing position. The volume just wasn't there. So I needed a change, which is, has brought me into my current position. Yeah. Can you maybe name, um, cause I think there's always, there's always like learning lessons in these, in these like different offers. So do you, was there like one or two things that you, that you pulled from the, like that first like cold calling position that, that you can see kind of like creeping up into your, to your calls or, or today? Yeah, it's uh, hmm. um, when you when you're in a business that's that's so small like that, you see all the moving parts, you know, even though it's not your business, you get to see all the moving parts. And that was really valuable for me because I, I thought to myself, like, huh, like business is pretty simple. You know, it's just it's it's an offer. You have something of value. Um, you slap a price tag on it. You make sure you get your fulfillment down like that is what a business is like. I could do that. But let me let me get the sales down first and then maybe, you know, do that down the road. Um, but having that mindset into going to a slightly bigger business where I'm like, OK, I still see the moving parts. It's a little bit more organized. Here's what they're doing differently um, to then, you know, an even bigger business and, and having that first starter mindset to like, hey, let me dip my feet in the space. Um, the potential is endless here. And that's pretty darn cool. So that was that was something valuable that I took from that first. Mm -hmm. gig. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you get to like you get to work really closely with uh, you know, the, the owners essentially. And you yeah. can, you know, a lot of times you can help them, especially when you're going through, through training, like, you know, through, through RCA and, you know, listening to Cole talk and stuff like that is like, you can start to like, you become kind of like more valuable, I guess. I don't know if that's like the best word, way to put it, but because you, you know how like all these things work, you could then like start pushing that onto them in, in a good way, obviously, and helping them yeah. like refine their processes. Yeah. And I think that's, there's always, like you said, like the, the possibilities are endless. If you come into like a position in the, in the right way with the right mindset and not look at it as like, Oh, these aren't, these people aren't, aren't good. It's like exactly. also realizing it's, it's, I mean, it was your first offer. So you can't really, you don't have stuff to compare into, but then also knowing, okay, like, I know there is like all these other people are saying like there's either other opportunities where calls are being booked to my calendar and like, you know, you know, there was, that was a, a, a better way essentially. Yeah. So and ad adding on to that, sorry to interrupt, adding on to that. Um, it was my first sales gig and here's how I knew it wasn't the right thing because I hadn't been in a sales position prior and this person had me like designing their scripts for them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is, yeah. this is not like granted, like <laughs> I, I just went through Cole Gordon's training. I'm fired up. I feel like, hey, I can provide some serious value, which I was. Um, but <laughs> no, not, not, uh, not fresh off the, fresh off the training, you know, helping you, helping you write the scripts. Not, not for me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So you, you go through that offer, you go through the second one and then let's, so let's jump into the, I guess the current offer that you're on now. And like, was that self source? Was that through the pipeline? What, what was the, what was the process there? How did the interview go? Let's talk, let's yeah. break down the whole thing. Yeah. So the beautiful thing about this space, especially for anyone who's kind of entering it, um, when it comes to the interview process, it's, it's very not corporate. And that's, that's so refreshing, especially if you come from that world. Um, I, I hopped on, I happened to get lucky with this opportunity. I think we all have, you know, a little bit of luck in our lives to, to lead us to where we're at. And, and I got, I got lucky. I, I was sorting through the, the opportunities on different Facebook groups. And I started to, to get an like idea of, of where the legitimate ones were versus the not so legitimate ones. And, and so I, I hopped on a call with this, with this gentleman, didn't know who he was. Turned out he's an absolute killer. He's my, he's my team lead right now. And he's just a, a monster. He's been in the space for years and he's, he's one of the best that I've seen in terms of his cadence, his tone, amazing guy to learn from. So I'm grateful to have him. Um, and, and I hopped on the call with him and, and he basically said, Hey, like, um, what have you done? What are you looking to do? Are you hungry? Are you coachable? All right, let's do it. <laughs> and that, and that was really, that was really it. Um, I, you know, I told him I, I had some success in the space. Um, and he's like, he's like, Hey, um, the, the numbers that you're talking about, you know, some of the, <laughs> like some of our lowest guys aren't even doing those numbers. Like here's what our average guy is doing. And I was like, Whoa, um, can I, can I do that in the first month? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, to, to get and to give an idea on the numbers, am I allowed to discuss numbers on this? Okay, so so to to give an idea on the numbers, um, I told this this gentleman um, who's now my team lead. I told him, hey, um, I want to come in and I'll make I want to make ten grand my first month. You know, if I'm if I'm being a full time closer, I want to make ten grand my first month. And he's like, okay, here's here's what it takes to do that. Um, you take ten calls per day. Um, you have a twenty percent close ratio. The average ticket on each um, on each price tag is is uh, or on each offer is about twenty five hundred dollars. Um, so you take 10 calls per day, close two of them each day, $500 per day. You work five days a week. You do that for a month. There's your 10 grand. And I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> you have an actual answer for me. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was so, and then I didn't realize that the commission structure was even better than that. So it wasn't even just 10%. It started to, you started to work your way up in tiers. And then I started to really see what's possible when I see the top guys doing, um, some really, really crazy numbers. So, um, 
we'll be happy to get into that, but that is the that is the short of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, as we're breaking down numbers, I think there's in most people's heads and I'm going back to my like my 2015 brain of, you know, we were talking about before is like I was making 2000 bucks a month and that was like my cap. And I didn't know there was it was possible. I thought the only way to make that like more money than that was to be like a business owner, which is, you know, I started my first business and that didn't really go that well. Um, Then found remote closing and everything was good. But uh, what would you say to someone that's maybe in the mind, like kind of in that lack of a better word, like scarcity mindset that here you say those numbers and you're like math here, this, yeah, this all works out at this point. I feel like at the point of you jumping in, I feel like you'd had a little bit of a taste to know that that's possible. But what would you say to someone to help them break through the mindset that it is possible for someone that, you know, they're just getting started that still don't believe like they still think it's too good to be true. Yeah, I know that might be kind of hard. <laughs> no, it's it's totally true, and that's exactly what it is. Is it's it's mindset. Um, you know, it's believing that that you can really make the kind of numbers that you might dream of right now. Um, I wanted to come into the space and I wanted to make six figures, and I thought six figures, you know, hundred k per year, eighty three hundred dollars a month was a lot of money. Um, it's not. You know, it's 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 not. So to give some context, like I came out of school, I was making about thirty three hundred dollars per month take home. Um, and I thought that was pretty darn good. I was working like 55, 60 hour work weeks. I thought that was really good. I was coming out of school. I was making money. Um, and then I, I want to say I went to a personal development event. I was a big Tony Robbins guy. That's, that's sort of how I got my start with the whole personal development space. I went to one of his events, spent my whole summer paycheck back when I was 17 years old on it. Um, but I, I had gone to a couple of de- personal development events prior to or after that. And, and I go up to this guy and he's like, he's like, Hey, um, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm working for um, Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I'm, I'm, I'm making pretty good money. And he stops me. He's like, hey, what's what's good money for you? And I was like, oh, oh uh, <laughs> uh, I, I had screwed up because he was a little bit older than me. And and I was like, well, I'm making like, you know, 55, 60 per year. <laughs> and and he, like, he like pauses again. And I'm like, all right, what's he going to say? And he's like, uh, what if you can make that in a month? And I'm like, I was like, well, <laughs> like, do you, do, you make, do you make that in a month? And he's like, I have, I was like, what do you do? <laughs> and then we, you know, and then it kind of spiraled from there, but it's really just, it's, it's breaking the, the, that scarcity mindset of like really realizing what's possible. Like I was making $3,300 per month. Um, halfway through my last month, I was at 10 grand for the month, halfway through. Um, by the time I got to the end of the month, I was just under 19 K in commissions for the month. Um, that's nice. That was your first month. That was my first month for this new gig. Let's go, dude. That's amazing. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. So, so that was, um, and it was really just like Cole says in these trainings, and and like a lot of people have said, it's it's about finding the right vehicle. Um, you know, oftentimes you could be working really hard somewhere else, and and not to say nothing against people that hustle their asses off. Um, sometimes you need to just change vehicles, and and that's what it was for me. And and you know, hitting ten grand halfway through the month, which is more money than I've ever made in a month, I was like, wow, that's starting to feel a little bit small. Um, and I don't feel any different because of it. I, I, I still go to the grocery store, buy the same groceries. Like it's not any different. It's just, it's the mindset shift of like, okay, I, I can do this. And, and that's, that, that's pretty empowering. Yeah. Yeah. I think it really, it just comes down to, like you said, it's the mindset of it, but just also like having someone else validate that your thought of being able to make more money is, is actually valid. Yeah. Right. Validate that it's valid. Cause like, you know, a, a lot of like, uh, back when, again, back when I was like starting my own business and, you know, I was just hearing people saying that they were making 10 grand or, you know, their first like 5k a month. And that was like the goal. That was a goal for me. I was like, if I can make five grand a month, bro, like I'd be living good. This was before I had, you know, three kids and, and a family. But, um, but at the same time, it's like, all I really needed was the people around me to say like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. I feel like a lot of people are just in that, like, if they are in that kind of scarcity mindset, it's because of the environment that they're brought in. And that's, that's cliche, right? You are the five people that you surround yourself with, but it's true, it right? You, you can in your head be like watching and listening to these podcasts. But if, if the people around you are constantly saying like, everything's a scam, you know, inflation, this gas prices, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're almost forcing yourself to stay in like that, that mindset. So if you're watching this, I'm telling you, like, it's possible trust us we've at this point we have 25 episodes of people that are saying like this is possible i went through this so just a little you know a little little kick in the butt for some of you that are, that are listening so yeah um let's I, i'm curious for you know for your um you know going through that and, and having like that first first month what were some of the i guess 
was there any like any not secrets but obviously it's hard work and understanding but were there any like any tips that you can give to someone that is it getting in that situation they're going to their first gig you know they want to they want to really make an impact they want to you know make this money that everyone's talking about any any tips for them yeah it's it's um there's there's some sacrifices that come with that um and that's not in a bad way either like like aaron just said like you you really are the people that you hang out with the people that you surround yourself with um if, if you're surrounding yourself with people that think you know you know 100 grand is a lot of money um guess what i mean that's that's going to be your scope that's going to be your reality and you know, when it comes to, to sacrifices for me, I mean, just like little, some little cheat hacks kind of thing. Um, I gave up alcohol for January. Um, I gave up alcohol. I started getting better sleep. I started stop going out as late. I started reading instead of doing social media at the end of my day. Like when the, the people in the sales space, sales space tell you to, to train like an elite athlete, that's what you want to do because you want to be able to show up every single day with energy and enthusiasm and passion and be able to, to make more money and help more people. Um, that's what it comes down to. And if you're not willing to do that, it's probably not the space for you. Um, and that's pretty damn cool because you really weed out the people that want to be average in this space. So it comes with some sacrifices. It comes with wanting to be the best that you can be. Um, most people won't do that, which is why most people won't make the money that, that, you know, that, that, it, that it takes to, uh, you know, I shouldn't say that it takes, um, most people won't make. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's, it's, and we, we give the statistic all the time or like saying, but it's like in order to make the money that the, the 1% do, you have to make the decision that the 99% of other people mm, will make, you know? Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's, and, and that's like a, I'm glad that you said, you know, brought up the, the part about, you know, not drinking and not going out and, and replacing like, you know, the reading with social media, because I, I think that a, a really big question for a lot of people, we see it on the comments of YouTube videos and in the school group of like, how do I get better at sales? How do I get better at sales? What is like the, 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 the change that I can make to close at a higher percent? And a lot of times it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with the script that you use or whatever. It's how you operate in every other aspect of your life. Are you waking up and going to the gym? Are you eating right? Are you putting the right things in your body? Are you meditating? Are you doing, you know, all these things that, that are going to help you perform and keep your mind clear? You know, so I think that's like the the hidden secret that, that no one really talks about. It's not so much about the closing. Side. It is. And I remember Cole on one of these trainings, he said, hey, um, you know, biggest difference that I made one time, uh, he said it skyrocketed my closing rates. He said, I just I just started going to bed at the same time each night. <laughs> and I was like, wow, can it be that easy? And I started doing it. And guess what? It, it, it works. Um, you need everything to come in alignment. Like you just said, Aaron, like the, the, you know, the meditation and the exercise and the eating right, sleeping right, um, drinking your water, you know, make sure you get your water in per day. Like it's, it's everything. And that's, that's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the little things that, that also like in, you know, in, in, uh, what's the word? Like it compounds on itself, you know, there's, there's one thing, there's one thing that you said a little bit ago that, um, that I think people could, could get some value out of is you were saying that you were like sourcing through and finding different stuff on Facebook and you said that you were able to quickly or, or after doing it for a certain amount of time, you were able to distinguish the legitimate from the illegitimate offers. Mm -hmm. What were some of the like the, the things that you were using as like things to check off the box of like, okay, this is a good one. This may be not so much just to save people headaches. <laughs> yeah. So it, it helps to, to, to go a little bit further as opposed to just messaging these people when they, when they post a job post, um, you know, message them, see, see if they post, you know, maybe what their company is. Um, see if you can go onto their profile and figure out what company they work for. If you can, you know, go onto that company's website, see, get a, get a feel for maybe how big they are, if it's just a one man show or not. Um, and, and see how much they give you. If they, if they say, um, Hey, if they're, if they're being vague, um, with, with what, you know, they, they're just saying, Hey, you can make these big numbers, but we're not going to tell you too much about the offer. Um, apply with us today or something like that. It, it's, you know, you, you start to do when you, when you see it enough, um, you start to be able to, to distinguish between, Hey, this, this seems legitimate and this is just not, and it just, it just takes repetition. Um, and that's the biggest thing in sales. I think it's just, it's a volume game, right? Um, you want to be effective as well. So you don't want to just kind of overload yourself, but when you're first self-sourcing gigs, um, just put so much time into it. Just, just absolutely just dump out, you know, resumes, applications, do voice memos. Voice memos was something that helped me out a lot in, in reaching out to people. Um, just cause it's easier, it's easier for someone to click on a voice memo than it is for them to read a whole paragraph. So that's a little tip that I have. Um, but it just comes from repetition and, and you start to see the patterns and you start to say, okay, that, that looks like a little bit more of a professional posting. Um, okay. That person's located in Australia. That might not be the gig for me. Um, yeah, that's what it comes. Yeah. That's, that's a good point too. Cause 
it, the, the way that these business owners are like presenting themselves, I, I just like to kind of break down like everything that you say in like, you know, a way that everyone could understand too, is like, if you look at these companies from like a high level, and let's say you do go to their profile and it's not optimized. They don't have their business website. They don't have like a funnel that leads to something. They don't have like a book of calling for you. You can really quickly tell that it's like, okay, if I'm a closer and they don't have a funnel on the front end to make it really easy to book calls for me, like probably not the best, best route to go down. You know, it's like, it shines the light even on the, on the front end on some of the, the issues that might be internally that you can, you know, again, like you said, catch before, you know, before you jump too deep into it. So, um, Totally. I, this is a question that I've actually, I don't know why I've never asked this. I think it's, it's more like a, a time thing, but with you, I'm, you know, I, I think you're, you just are, are a lot more concise with the things that you're saying, which, which I love. Um, what are some of your goals for like the next, like, let's say in the next, I don't know, let's say the next six months, like if, you know, staying in the current offer that you are knowing that you did 18 K in, in your first month, what do you kind of like foresee for yourself in terms of like personal goals that you want to hit in let's say the next six months? Yeah, that's that's um, that's a good question. I since since getting into the space, so there, there's something that helped me out with with when I spoke to my team lead first when I when I mentioned that first interview, um, he said, "Hey, just just make five hundred dollars per day. That'll get you to ten k per month." Um, for me, and I have a I have a little poster in the back that says this. Um, and you have such a nice background too. I got this blank freaking wall, <laughs> but uh, you know, have to. <laughs> it, it, it's it's amazing. Like it's it's if I hop on a call with you, it's like hey, take my money. So, <laughs> but yeah. here's what it is. Um, so so I I just I want to win the day. Um, you know, if I can, if I can win each day and, and show up each day and no matter how the last day went or the last couple days, um, if I didn't hit my numbers, that's okay. Just, just win the day. Um, for me, that number from 500 days, it's increased just a little bit so I can, you know, keep scaling and keep, you know, um, surpassing the goals that I, that I have hit. But, um, but that's, that's what it is. I, I, I hate to say that I'm not thinking as long-term as that. And I, I totally am. And, and now this is, this is the aside. So this is me thinking long-term. My, my short-term thing is like, hey, just win the day, show up, be present, help as many people as you can, um, and just continuously stack the cash without a second thought of, hey, um, where's this going to lead or what can I do with this money? It's just like, hey, let me, let me do this. Let me, let me you know, get really good at this craft. I was listening to the podcast with you and Josh um, the other day. Really good, by the way. Really freaking good because I, I see the, the culture that you guys have built, and it's so intense and it's so cool because it's so high performance related and you can see it when you talk to you guys um that's what's so cool that's probably what drew me into rca in the in the very beginning so with that um i want to i want to i want to get to be on your guys level like i'm i'm super new at this i just had an awesome month right that's awesome but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stop there right i want to keep stacking the momentum so i can get really good so i can have the conviction like you guys do when you show up on these calls and and you know what the hell you're doing and you show up with power and you know charisma and all that um because I, I know I'm not there, you know, but I, I really want to be because it feels really good when you speak to someone with that level of conviction, um, where you're like, oh, they, they know their shit. Um, excuse my language. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse on here, but, uh, that's, that's cool. I want to, so I, fast forwarding, you know, six months, that's a, that's a, that'll be a, you know, blink away. Um, I want to get really good at this skill so that, so that I have something to give back. And then if that means maybe stepping up into a management role, you know, later down the road, then, then I'll have someone to give back at that point. But for right now, sales, showing up on the calls, becoming a remote closer. Like that's what I want to just nail down. And that's what I'm going to do. Dude, that's, that's a really good answer. And, and, you know, not saying that I was expecting a specific answer, but I think a lot of times with like that, that goal question, you, you may, well, maybe not in your offer. It's, it's from, from what it sounds like, it's more like weight loss. So the, the answer is usually I want to lose this amount of weight. Right. But it's kind of the, the parallel would be like, if you ask that question of someone and they said like, I want to lose weight or you ask them their goal and they say, well, it's because I want to like spend more time with my kids and not like it. So it's like deeper, right? What I would usually expect is like, I want to make $50,000 a month. Uh, but it's, it's, it's cool to I see. Can add, I can add on to that too. Um, just a little bit. I, I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off too, but like, I, I am thinking of something. So what, what this space has done for me, what remote closing has done for me is, is allow me to create more freedom of lifestyle for myself while continuously being able to make more money than, than I've ever made in my life. Um, I want to keep that going. I want to be able to, you know, do what Josh does, which is, you know, kind of, it sounds like he's like jumping around from place to place. I think that's what I heard on the podcast. Um, kind of like cycling in different cities, taking advantage of the remote, you know, closing lifestyle and, and just, you know, continuously building the life that I want to live while continuously being able to make more money and help more people. 
Um, and the, the, you know, it's just, there's, there's levels to it. And, and the more that you can do that, um, that's what really just lights me up and makes me happy because then you can show other people that it's possible and that you don't have to settle for where you're currently at. And, and I want to be able to live that, embody that. And, and that maybe is like the deeper part of, of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And, and I think it really just all comes back to like understanding what is possible from the, like the little things that you've done uh, along the way, little and big things, um, to, to kind of get to, to where you are through, through all that. So, uh, we, we are coming up on, on the top of the hour. So I want to be, be respectful of your time. Uh, what would be like one main thing that you give to someone? <clears throat> if you've listened to episodes, you know, this question's coming, but what would you say to someone that's like, that was kind of in your shoes that they're getting smacked with like 500 different ads of like drop shipping is Amazon FBA do this, do that. What would you say to someone that uh, to let them know, Hey, like those things are great, but this is like, this might be a little bit more for you if you're just trying to, you know, escape the nine to five and, and get to this point. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it, it comes with work, you know, I, it, it's, there's so many of these offers and these ads and these courses that, that promise that it's going to happen like that. And, and it's not, no matter what you do, you could be successful in any avenue, but if you just pick one thing, um, and if your thing is, Hey, I'm, I'm decent at communicating, you know, I, I feel like I can connect pretty well with people. And I, and maybe if I can leverage that skill into making some money, then this might be the space for you. Um, the singularity of focus has, has helped me so much in, in reduce anxiety, not feel like I'm missing out on, on other business opportunities. Um, and really just, you know, if you can stay focused, which is really tough to do as a, as, as a person of any age, but especially a young person, when you say like, Oh my God, the world is so big. There's so many opportunities. Um, if you could just stay focused get really good in whatever that means to you. Um, if it's communicating, this might be the space for you because it's pretty damn fun. Um, and it, and it's, you know, it's fun. There's the ability to make money and, and connect with people and help people in, in so many different areas of life because there's so many different offers out there and businesses to, to help people with. Um, singularity of focus. That's that's what's helped me. And I, I think that's what can help a lot of people. Yeah, back back to what you just said. It's it's like if you're, if you're looking to learn like more about just I, I think, you know, sales, we talked about it before, like sales kind of has this like negative connotation, but when you really break it down, it's just like you get, you just have to get better at communication. It's just high level communication. So skip the communications degree <laughs> and, and, and exactly. jump into, <laughs> into this because exactly. we're going to learn so much more about communication here than, you know, in, in, in one of those, not anything and, negative about college, but you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and with that, I, I've learned more in my, you know, oh man, I, I've, I've learned more in a couple months in, in actually being in a remote closing role, um, you know, managing pipelines and interacting and handling follow-up um, than I have in, huh, man, I thought I learned, I thought I learned a lot in my first job. Um, I learned jack shit in college. Sorry to bash college. I, but my first job, I'm like, wow, like, I, where was this my whole life? Like, why was I not working in this time? And then remote closing, it's like a whole new level. Like, wow, this is, <laughs> I, I've learned so much and I'm really grateful to be where I'm at right now. And and on top of that, I, I was looking through your Instagram, Aaron, I'll, I'll end with this. Um, I was looking through your Instagram and I see people commenting on some of the stuff and it's like, it's like scam, like this is not gonna, it's like, yeah, if you don't put in the work, if you don't understand what the systems are, um, it's so easy to say that won't work for you because probably nothing will, right? If you're not willing to actually put in the work and, and, and do it. Um, so that's the truth of it. You gotta do the work, but damn, is it is it rewarding because you feel like you're showing up and getting better each day? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, there's uh, the, the scam, like it's, it's, those are the two biggest comments is like scam. And then this sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> I, don't like people have been I don't so, understand that one. I don't understand that don't, one at all. Yeah. It, I think it's, I, I think it's just the nature of it. Like, cause like you said, like if someone thinks that something's a scam, they're going to also like inherently they like pair scam and like a uh, pyramid scheme. And then, but they also don't know like what a pyramid scheme is. So it's, I won't go down that whole thing. I have like videos on, on all of that stuff. Um, so dude, I, I I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to, to kind of think I'll do a little outro thing here. Um, uh, but 30 seconds to think of like one of your just biggest tips that you would have for someone like jumping into the, either jumping into the space or maybe there's someone that's like, you know, they're in your position back in, in college and, you know, just, just think of, think, just a tip for someone to, to end off on. Um, so while, uh, while he thinks about that, for those of you that are listening up to this point, I mean, we've literally been talking for 40 minutes at this point. So you are probably somewhat interested about remote closing or at least what it is. So what we're going to do is down in the description here on YouTube and also in the show notes, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, um, what will, it's just gonna be a training. Uh, it's a full breakdown. My business partner, Cole, put it together and uh, he just breaks down, you know, what remote closing is, um, how you can use it, how you can find these different kind of gigs. We can't go too deep into it on these uh, on these podcasts because it's mostly about, you know, highlighting the guest. But if you are interested about it and you, you don't, it's like your first time hearing, 
it'll really break down in like 30 minutes exactly what you need to know to figure out hey is this right for me um, and I think like at, at the very least like check out the video it's like again you won't really it's free you just opt in you you put your name in there and you'll at least be able to tell yourself like okay let me check this off the list this isn't something that I'm interested in at the very least again you just watch the video you, you waste 30 minutes uh, which I don't think it will because you know you'll get some value out of it so anyway check the link down in the description or in the show notes in the podcast but uh, dude what's the tip what you got for us I, I would say, especially if you're a young person, but this should, this should hold true for all ages. Um, you got to be willing to learn. You know, you, you have to be, you have to come in and, and be coachable. The only reason that I got my, my first couple shots in this space, um, and I'm very new to this space, is because I, I showed up and I was like, hey, I, I want to learn from you guys. Like, I know you're playing the game at a heck of a, a, bit, a, a higher level than I am. Um, and, and I want to, I want to learn from that. Um, because you can't expect to, you know, come in and feel like you have all the answers. I don't care if you're, you know, the top sales rep in whatever field, if you come into a new space, um, you got to be willing to learn. People will feel that they want to teach you because they, they see that there's potential there. If you're coachable, um, that's, what's helped me, especially if you're a young person, I, I think that can go a long way. Sweet. Yeah. Love it, man. All right. We'll, we'll end it on there. Dude, once, once again, I appreciate you hanging out with us um, here for the last couple of minutes. We'll have to bring you on for like a, maybe like a six month update. Um, Cause I know you're going to do crazy things uh, within this offer and, and just get better and better every day. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. So for those of you who are listening again, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Click the link down in the description or in the show notes on the podcast. Of course, leave a like comment and you say some nice words of, of, uh, of Graham here. And uh, yeah. Check out the links, all that kind of stuff. Subscribe. Aaron here from the Remote Closing Academy podcast. We'll see you guys at the next one. Talk soon. Peace. Appreciate it, brother. Bye-bye.